Hello, everyone, and welcome to a product spotlight with Xperio and NXchange. Today's session will be hosted by myself, Scott Heath. I'm part of our graph and analytics uh, team today at Xperio. If you have any questions, certainly reach out to me, um, and you can find some of the information that we'll have today on our website. But very excited today to, to share that spotlight with you. Um, who is Xperio? Well, we are um, a consulting and software uh, development business, and we've been around for um, roughly 15 years. We've worked in a lot of different industries, and today we're going to spend uh, a fair amount of time specifically around energy and power, and our partner in exchange, who is, uh, as you'll see today, revolutionizing uh, that industry. And specifically, what we're going to do today is I'm going to give you a little um, a snippet, a snapshot of kind of what is an exchange, why is it so revolutionary, and then Xperio, who is very, very happy and excited to be partnering with exchange, is really um, helping in the installation, the customization, the configuration uh, out in the wild for some of these very large and very exciting new systems. So today uh, should be uh, pr pretty exciting. So with that, I'll go ahead and jump right in. Uh, so on the agenda today, we're going to walk through sort of why um, this has become so important, so fundamentally important for all of us, whether you're in the business or you're a practitioner or you're a IOU or co-op or wherever you may sit in, in the whole world of it. But um, I myself am also a consumer. And, and what does this mean to me? And so these are the kinds of things that we're going to we're going to chat about here. So one of the first things that we see is, you know, the last couple of years have really heightened our awareness, right? Those of us that are in Texas, we've had massive uh, ERCOT issues. We've had more shutdowns. We've had rolling blackouts. Those that are in California and, and the East and the West Coast, um, it's been a tremendous year or, or several years, quite frankly, between wildfires and, and those kinds of things. So the backdrop for this is risk is increasing. The demands for all of us as customers with more EVs coming online has just really started to stress the entire um, uh, process, in addition to the humans, in addition to the actual electrical grid. Um, and again, these go on and on. But again, as a person in Texas, when, when you don't have power and you expect it, um, it becomes problematic. And obviously, these voices are starting to get louder and um, start to have more teeth, especially um, in, in some of these other areas. So again, that's that's our first sort of dimension, if you will. That's our one of our backdrops. The second one then is massive opportunity. The government um, is now realizing that all of those previous issues and symptoms of problems um, are indeed part of what they need to get around, right? We need to spend $2.5 trillion um, or more um, uh, in you know, hundreds and hundreds of, of billions in different areas. So again, whether it's a, a specifically an electrical grid or it's certain categories of things, right? Um, and then we start to see things like savings. So McKinsey has reported that there are trillions of dollars of savings. So if I start to use um, this properly, I can use analytics. I can start to um, do real-time IoT. I can put in uh, solar, I can do battery backups, right? These, all of these things are all true um, in, in what we're doing. But now I sort of get this incredible undertow, right? So now I have technology and I have money um, and I have an explosion of different ways of doing that, right? So, so with that sort of struggle and symptoms, we now start to see these massive opportunities and more importantly, how can we, depending on who you are in, in, in the world, start to take advantage of some of these different elements. And that's where we start to see this direction, right? Where now we start to see that, well, um, from that, we are seeing this enormous explosion of energy resources. How can I create a micro grid? How can I affect power both uh, 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 generation and consumption? And can I self-service? And how can I create these efficient buildings, right? That is really the other element then is how do we start to take all the things behind the meter? How do we how do we make those part of what we can do? Because now with the technology, we can go all the way down uh, to the toaster on one side um, and all the way back to generation on the other side. We can actually effect 
um, and integrate with all of those things. And then we start to see the, the regular things that we've been seeing out there, which is this IoT. I now have this enormous capability. Well, just getting smart on the edge of the grid um, is interesting and it's very valuable, but on its own, it doesn't fulfill sort of that larger ecosystem that we're starting to see out here. And these trillions of dollars of, again, how do we bring it down to being useful? And then how do we start to make it valuable, um, again, regardless of who you are? So again, those are sort of the three different uh, views that we have in 2023. And so what we'd like to do today is spend a few minutes um, going over um, what we believe is something that is truly revolutionary uh, in the industry. Now, why is all of this so darn hard, right? Well, first of all, when we look at the unlimited amount of data now that we're starting to inject, we have SCADA, we have analytics, we have data, we have big data, right? We have all these different things out here. Well, number six here at the top is that I have an enormous set of legacy systems and they've, they've done me well um, in history. But now when I start to overlay intelligence, what many of our customers are starting to see is just a massive flood of different kinds of data. And what's it doing? Well, it's showing me in my rear view mirror of what was it doing? And it's giving me alerts beyond my wildest comprehension because it is really sort of looking at that more static styles data. Then when I say number five is I have disparate technology. So that explosion of IoT devices now means that there's lots of different protocols. There's lots of systems that are going on. So now if I'm an executive, I have number six where I'm getting a lot of different directions, right? Turn left, turn right. Oh, by the way, now I have thousands of things going on. If you can imagine your car dashboard just lighting up, right? Thousands of different things that you're being read in uh, onto and, and, and it, you, you get numb to it. And then you start looking at things like time. Well, what if I just simply wanted to denoise all of that and I wanted to go back in time? And then I wanted to find out sort of what really happened and then more importantly, start to move towards the future to be able to do that. Well, that is extremely difficult. And now as I look at number six and number four, five and then number four, I start to see number three. So now I see this um, explosion of less than five seconds. I can get sub-second in some cases. So now I literally opened a fire hose on the whole situation and it's made it even worse. And then coupled with all of that comes this massive set of data. So now, now I need to not only know which, um, uh, effectively, which hay bale to go look for the needle in, um, but now I need to go find the needle uh, for my particular situation. And then when I sort of finally, in number one, want to see all of that in one single pane of glass, um, all of these different systems, all of these different sort of analytics capabilities, it is now a very, very large and monumental business problem. But wait, there is good news. And I think that's really what we're here today to talk about, um, is that these use cases over on the left, whether I'm looking at situational awareness, I'm looking at assets, or I'm looking at um, public safety or IoT or preventative and predictive analytics, what if I could use that technology over on the right over there. If I could look at all my old patterns, if I could do what if, if only I could use the history to teach me the human and my staff and my team to be better. What if I could get ahead of that? What if I could create those predictions? And then in the center, what if I was able to create that in such a way that more mere humans could do it? Maybe I was someone over in the customer group, or maybe I was over in the outage group, or I was in the network operating system. Now what I want to be able to do then is I want to see all of that data in one single pane of glass, but I would like to see it in the way that an individual um, can use it. How can I actually see a problem, detect that there is a true problem, solve the problem, and then prevent it going forward. That now starts to become a brave new world. And ultimately, this is really what we're trying to talk about today, is take the use cases over on the left, use the power um, to give it to a human in the center, and then use that uh, machine learning and technology over on the right. Okay. So now this is a different way of seeing that, so that if I'm an executive over way over on the left, 
what is my business value? Maybe I do want to increase my revenue or I want to optimize my load so that my money making is not necessarily from customers, but from optimizing what I already have. Maybe it's decreasing money. Maybe it's taking my assets and my connectivities and making them just quite frankly more efficient. Maybe I've overbuilt, right? And as we work our way to the right, those are where those other use cases we talked about really sort of come in. And then ultimately at the bottom, it's risk. How do I de-risk this? I don't wanna end up in court. No one does. No one likes tangling with the government, um, but at the same level, we definitely want to make all of these things better because as a business, wherever we are in this value chain, we need to optimize these things on a constant basis. Now, what is this sort of um, hierarchy or connected elements of other connected elements? One of the things we start to see now is looking at the patterns of what's going on. Electrical grids, assets, um, derms, virtual power plants, all these things over the hill in the future are really manifestations or connections of highly connected elements. So if I'm a network over on the right, those are assets that are connected to other assets. They are um, at some level atomic, but they make up a larger ecosystem of an electrical grid. Now the grid itself may actually have distribution centers. It may have hubs, it may have substations, it may have reclosers, it has all of that. But now I can overlay that with humans. I can overlay that with customers. I start to see that those different elements are connected. Well, I can also then start to look at where those assets are. Who are the people that maintain those? Now, if I start to connect all of that in my brain, I start to think of something that we refer to as a graph. Now, a graph is nothing more than nodes and vertices, the connections of these different elements. But what if I could, in three-dimensional space, connect a customer, their load, their consumption, an EV charging station, the network that connects their fabric all the way down to their meter into the building. That is an enormous, very, very complex grid that we now need to start to think about in these kinds of terms, because if I wanna do prediction and I wanna solve problems, I need to look at all of it because in, in the domino world, if you knock over one domino, it, it inadvertently could knock down multiple. Or if I think I'm doing something for good, I may in fact cause worse problems. But the point or the takeaway here is that all of these core concepts are all connected uh, for what we're where we're gonna go on the use cases. Now, why are we here today? Well, that partnership that we talked about between Xperio and NXchange. NXchange is this solution that we'll be seeing today where I can do those uh, sort of heady kinds of things. I can maximize, I can see real time, I can bolt on to what most of these um, solutions that I mentioned today, whether it's an outage management system or SCADA or a customer, right? I can bolt on um, because more importantly, I now need to adapt both for my business and to the government. I need to be able to do that. And again, tying all those different elements together um, is what we'll see today. Now, in our next section, let's, let's look behind the curtain. I said a lot of words now about some pretty big technology. And again, if you're a business person, you know, you care about those different elements. Um, but just for a quick second, we're going to look behind that curtain. Now, it's true across most solutions today, not just in energy or power or distribution or, or co-ops, right? It's everybody out in the world today. And our friends at Amazon and Google um, have shown us a path. And that is that back in um, you know, the 90s and even in the 80s, we were still looking at ways to connect the data. There was always a question of the data. Tell me, tell me where the schema is. Where is the data marked? Right. And what we see then is that was a, a good step, right, to connect that data. We use time series. We do some other kinds of things, SCADA data. We connect all that data. And then we see things like Tableau and Power BI. We see that those get us now a higher capability. But those were very short. Those were very good to show me what happened yesterday, what happened three weeks ago. Right. What we now want to start to do is in this in exchange platform. Um, is start to drive those insights. Let's use this technology of connected data. But now as we get um, into the 2050s and we start to go now in this sort of uh, upward trajectory, 
I want to tie it all together. I want to increase my accuracy. I want to see these false positives for things that, that I'm seeing out there. I want to see now this rubber meets the road in these systems. And the great news is today it's achievable. And that's really where we're going here is to get this bigger picture to allow the human to be in the loop and to then harness this incredible power of graph technology and machine learning um, so that the system can help us um, out of what we're trying to get into. Now, this concept, right? We see the way these things come together. Now, I mentioned the whole litany of different elements that can go on here over on the left. I can have assets, I can have IoT, I can have customers. Those customers can be retail, they could be commercial, they could be all these different categories of ways that I want to see my energy data. But what if now I was able to think about that in a logical way? And what we're going to see inside of this product from NX is the ability to see those different elements, to see their connections, to see their dependencies, how they all work together um, so that I can create that next step, right? But now the way that we're going to do this is simply by using this capability that's inside of NX. So again, whether I have my GIS data or I have my customer data or my smart grid or my EV technology over on the left, what we're really trying to do then is those other higher order elements over here on the right. So if I want to interpret what is going on in certain assets for predictive maintenance, or if I want to set up alerts or alarms before things start to get away from me, I want to do things like transactive energy. I want to start to look for carbon reductions, right? All of these things over on the right um, need an incredible connected data platform. And I need to be able to look at my larger ecosystem um, that we'll see here in a minute. So in order to fulfill those, I need to have this sort of connected or single pane of glass in the center. Now, how do I do that, right? I have the ability um, to go in and look at what these different functions are. So whether it's a virtual power plant, um, or this 360 view over on the right. I need to be able to get in now at the lowest level. If I can't see that atomic level of the data for what those different things are, it's very difficult for me to start to show um, what expectations are, where what if modules are trying to give the human the leg up, right? I have to be able to show that. So what we start to see then is NX is designed from the ground up to be intelligent, it's designed to then to be a system of systems. It can orchestrate how all these other parts are working together over on the left. And then obviously over on the right, part of that now is looking at agnostic data sets, right? There are thousands of IoT devices coming online, but what if they were using a singular protocol? What if they're using a handful of protocols from Siemens and some of the other big guys out there? Well, the good news is that is actually now within reach. Um, to be able to do that, because then what I want to do is connect that in the data side. I want to see how those things work together, that fingerprint of an individual device connected to hundreds or thousands of other devices creates a very different and unique um, fingerprint as well. And now what I can do is I can actually work up now through the grid interactive controller. Now I can connect um, behind the meter so I can go into a building style or a campus style. Um, to be able to see those. I can also see what's upstream to the left of what's going on and how those things um, are, are actually being able to make those connections. So again, this NX platform is bringing us that uh, capability. Now, part of this platform is extremely powerful, right? We mentioned the different modules and we'll see those here in a minute, but how do I actually do what's behind the curtain? Well, our first stop on this is the advanced analytics, these algorithms, this ability to use machine learning as a bolt on to what you already have today. Um, and so what we can do then is we start to look at these algorithms. So again, if you're not a math person, that's okay. But singularly, what is happening here is the ability to look at data, massive data, as we mentioned earlier, and its ability to find patterns. So what we can now do is we can use math so all of the similarities that we may have had previously with an outage or a public safety shutoff or a predictive maintenance or any of those kinds of things, I can use those patterns 
um, and I can identify them. I can find clusters. I can find groups of things. Maybe I have a group of assets that are connected that are underpowered or they're underconductored or something about them um, is going wrong. And there are thousands of data uh, elements that can give us that. It might be data from SCADA. It might be a combination of SCADA and or raw one-line data or one-line diagram data, right? Then I can look for dependencies. And ultimately where I'm going with all of these is the ability to find, connect, and introspect that massive set of data so that now what I can do is I can make recommendations that are more accurate to my human. What is the shortest path if I have a network outage, if I want to redirect something? What is the sort of uh, different capabilities that I can do? So that's sort of step one. The second thing is out of the box, a product like Exchange can come with multiple kinds of those. So now I can look over on the left for what are called graph algorithms. I can look for different clusterings, connections, centralities, where things are going and where they've been. Now I can overlay uh, uh, sort of overlay those with machine learning over on the right. Now I can see very large connected networks. I can look for probabilistic capabilities. I can then look for clusterings or network neighborhoods of either users or power or EV kinds of things. All of these are now at my fingertips. So as a mathematician, we can start to see what are called non-obvious relationships. I can look at time and space as they fit together. Because ultimately, that's really what I'm trying to do now is take those deep links, take those patterns, and now what I really want to do is I want to overlay those with why can I solve them? How can I see those in the future? And then I can find perhaps there are communities of things that are bad. I need to go solve those because they're bringing a sort of negative impacts, whether it's it's overload, under capacity, you know, issues that are causing those. And then I can overlay time and space. This gives me now rise to that plus 50, in some cases, 60 to 80% more accurate Forecast, prediction, predictive maintenance, all those kinds of things are now capable, whereas before they were merely a dream. But I can bring those kinds of things together um, inside of a technology like this. Now, how does this work? Well, in this case, we're just going to take a little example, and we'll see some of this here in a minute around the product. And what we can do now is we can take that history. We can literally run the math on it, and it gives us a visual. Now, this user would never see this data, but this is really what's going on back uh, behind the scenes inside of a, a computer somewhere, is that I can see the correlation over here on the right, which is these particular assets were good. These particular assets in green were okay. The ones in red, not so good. And then obviously the ones down in magenta are the ones that are more likely um, to be part of an outage. Well, what did we do? We took that pattern, we taught it, uh, the system, which things were good and sometimes bad and then truly bad so that when the new IoT data comes in in real time, I can now instantly make a recommendation. But what am I doing? I can simply put it on a screen that the human can say with high confidence, I should take action on this and if I need to, I can dig in. But the system now has fulfilled that big jump in accuracy and those kinds of things. Why? Because the ENX platform is using that kind of technology behind the scenes. Now, let's see how this manifests and then let's, let's see this in action with a couple of demonstrations. So in our first module, so again, depending on sort of what use case you're trying to solve. So whether it's the base insight center, which allows me now to connect the data all the way down over on the left, all the way up through the stack. So I can see that single pane of glass. I can see it all in real time, but maybe what I'd like to do is look at it from a derm view. That's a way of viewing different assets and different elements in that sort of derm module. But what if I wanna run a virtual grid? I can do the same there. The same thing with the iDER and uh, effectively the EMS and, and the EV modules, right? All of these are designed now with a very specific purpose to see my alerts as they focus on the microgrid, or if I see my WEF or capability management 
um, I can focus on those. And that really helps the customer um, see what they want to see. They may be an IOU, they may be a co-op, they may be a customer of the co-op, right? All these different elements here, whether I'm in a commercial or an industrial view, allows me now to have that sort of single pane of glass, and then I can see it the way that I want to see it. And I can see these um, one-line diagrams, I can see what the different connections are. Now, the next thing is we have different uh, modules. So I mentioned power uh, and public safety, right? We have the ability to see the whole picture. But again, what Annex is trying to do now is offer this in such a way that business users and or categories of customers or, or, or capabilities are all sort of grouped um, at your fingertips. Now, the whole ecosystem, and this is obviously where Xperio comes in, is what does this mean? Right, so that if you are to purchase the Annex platform, there's more than just simply the platform for software. It's all tied together, right? So that I can see if I need to, Wesco, who is part of a, a, a partner in the ecosystem, what they want to do then is they offer an enormous catalog of every, uh, basically every product and, and different element that you need um, online. Tying that into this Annex ecosystem is core. So if I see a what if, uh, and a business problem, I can solve it uh, with Wesco. Now, let's say I'm a construction engineer, and let's say that I'm going to build a microgrid, that ability to work with full turnkey people that are out installing new por portions or what those different elements are, right? And all the way around the horn here from transaction energy where um, uh, entry point is another partner can look at my backhaul and, and, and my, my telco. And then if I'm HWH and I'm out doing professional services and doing those kinds of things for grants and I want to go get this in, the entire thing funded, also doing full construction, right, to be able to do those kinds of things, they tie together. And then those of us at Xperio, where we're bolting these things in, helping with analytics, right, helping our, our customers out there. And then if I actually want to see the whole thing in one glorious network operating system, system or I actually want to break it down by module, right, that's where the active use system really brings it home. Now I've got all of it at my fingertips. I've got the incredibly flexible capability um, to go do all that. So again, this is greater than the sum of the parts. And I think that is also what's so exciting. So let's see a demo. Um, that was a lot of words, Scott, and, and we're super excited. But now what we'd like to do is let's go see um, what these different capabilities are. So in our first example, what we see then is that atomic view. I can go see now at this atomic level, every single attribute every single uh, item that's out there. And if I'd like, I can actually change how these connections are done, right? This is what I would refer to at the very bottom. I can zoom in and I can see every feeder line. I can see every building. I can see every parking lot, every component, whether it's all the way down. Now, why do we do that? We talk about that at the bottom level. Now, when I see all of those connections, I also have the ability now to roll it up at a higher view. And that is really sort of what we like to do here is in these kinds of elements. Now what I can do is you can see it in real time. I have the ability to sense in one pane of glass all the way down to an HVAC if I like. I can go all the way out to a feeder or a recloser, right? I have that ability um, to go see what those different components are. And this is not just a dashboard. These are real-time IoT devices um, that are actually being affected um, out in the wild. The second thing that I can do is I can go look at those assets. I can see how all of those assets are working together, right? Where are they connected? What's upstream from my asset? What's the health of my asset? Um, and from that, I can start to create alerts. And in this case, I can just simply drop in. I can go see where those alerts are. I can see that I have perhaps two of those happening in real time. But now what I can do is I can correlate those with nearby assets. I can look at a much bigger picture. I can see how those things are introspected. And again, we mentioned the ability inside of uh, the core system, which is called the Insight Center. I can actually start to look at other things like DERMs or virtual grids. I can do things like smart contracts. Um, I can do these interconnection points. And ultimately where I'm going here is I can see all of the different detail inside of that. I can look all the way down to a boiler. I can look all the way up to a charging station, right? And so what we, we see now is a quick sort of dr uh, drop into the different modules. Now, I'm not gonna go through all those modules today, but the point of this is 
whether you're looking to do EV or you're doing um, this sort of energy management solution or distributed energy, the ENX platform has the capability, has the modularity now to show this sort of interconnection uh, for all of that data. We can even go out to the marketplace to go do that. Now, one of the other exciting things is that when we can start to see important elements here um, for things like um, tying together an alert, I actually want to do a what if module. What I'd like to do now is show you a little bit of showing how the alerts may work. Um, and then more importantly is how can I use that um, to create now this what if module. So let's go use those analytics, those those um, capabilities of using those algorithms at, at, at the fingertips. So in this case, what I can see then is I can see that demand overload. And so in this case, I'm looking at a baseline. I have a substation, I have time at the bottom, that atomic capability to look at all those different assets. But in this case, I'm looking at a sub-circuit. Um, it's for McKinney, Texas, which is where ENX is located. But in this case now, I'm seeing that, well, there's multiple elements here. I have meters, I have amp sensors. The system is in real time going out and showing those connections or dependencies. I have the ability now to go in and say, well, where are those outages? Where are those bumps occurring? What is going on here? Do I need to solve one singular problem or do I need to perhaps sort of back up uh, and look at a bigger problem? So what I'm doing is over on the map, I can use um, your uh, kinds of mapping system um, if, if you're a customer and you use Esri, right, this is something that we can plug into. But now as I go in, you start to see the system is using those recommendations. It's saying or suggesting to me that I actually have some other elements that are over here. Now what I can do is when I pick that eight megawatt, I can start to build these scenario parameters. I can say, well, are there interconnections? Are there other sub parameters that I want to do? And ultimately where I'm going here is I can be as as granular as I'd like. I can look at different loads and what sectors they may be in. I may look at resources, right, and what those different kinds are. And I can start to pick those. And what I'm looking for in this situation now is I can include those, I can subtract those, but ultimately where we want to go then is trying to find what are the scenarios where I can affect a change. And maybe I want to connect to Wesco, as I mentioned, where I want to go order that eight megawatt transformer or generator. Maybe what I want to do is come over and actually run one of those scenarios and share it with my team. Right? And so now what we start to see then is that ability to see what those are. And then I can take it all the way down to maybe I want to see what the carbon footprint is doing. I want to see now um, that if I did make this change, what does that mean for the um, uh, both for my business and for um, how that ecological sensitivity for where we're going to go, right? So I can start to see all these different pieces and parts um, today. So again, these demonstrations were meant to really sort of be uh, thought provoking. Uh, we've got lots more that we can share with you. Um, but that's really what we wanted to talk about today is how do these different kinds of modules work together um, to be able to um, present this. So in summary, what brought us today, right? A lot of different kinds of technologies that are out there. The market is sort of upside down, um, but an enormous amount of opportunity. And what we've seen today now is by partnering with the NXchange um, platform and a partner like Expiro, we can use this technology to bolt on to what you already have. So whether you have an existing SCADA system, having an existing CNI system, OMS system, all of those things can be bolted onto and used where they sit. This ability now to use that deep link connectivity, rolling it up at massive scale so that I can run those in database capabilities um, in real time. And I think that's really the, the goal here. The other thing then is really democratizing that data. So whether you're an executive or you're an IT person or you're a business user, all the persons have a role to play in this system, right? So no longer does the data drive everything. It's still very, very important, but now the humans um, in the business or doing the different roles and how these things fit together, they all have a place to work and work together. And then obviously, what is it about in Exchange and Expiro? We bring it all together. This platform of platforms is ultimately the power that's out there. And hopefully what you've learned today in our time together is that it's easy and straightforward to get it done. And 
sort of last plug here, if you will, come see the, the platform um, and reach out to us if you have any questions. Great spending the time today. Thank you again so much. If you have any questions, certainly reach out to me.